I'm sure you are sorry. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Next year, you know, you can't win them all. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Will everyone please rise for the invocation to be delivered by our clerk, Jeff Hall. Almighty God, creator of all and judge over all, we pray thee to guide our work in this meeting and in all our duties. We pray for our officers and members of this legislature who serve and guard the welfare of the citizens of this community, that by thy blessing they may be enabled to discharge their duties honestly and well. We pray, pray that by thy help, they may observe the strictest justice and preserve untarnished our loyalty to our county and to thee. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance to be led by Legislator Sosha. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At our meeting last month, we appointed Reverend Jerome Gingras to serve as chaplain at the Glendale Nursing Home. And very sadly, Father Jerry passed away suddenly this past week. We are very grateful to Father Jerry for his willingness to serve our Glendale community, and we're saddened by the news of his passing. His family, friends, and his congregation are in our thoughts and prayers. Please join me in a moment of silence and remembrance of Father Jerry. Thank you all. At this time, I'd like to call to order this evening's public hearing regarding the proposed 2022 operating budget and the proposed 2022 to 2027 capital budget. We'll let the clerk please take the roll. Mr. Fields. Present. Caruso. Absent. Ms. Pratt. Present. Ms. King. Present. Mr. Constantine. Here. Ms. Gatta. Here. Mr. Sosha. Here. Mr. Pascarella. Here. Mr. Paterni. Present. Ms. Oswich. Here. Ms. Solano. Here. Mr. McGarry. I believe Mr. McGarry is on Zoom. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. McGarry is excused. Mr. Hughes. Present. Mr. McDonald. Here. Mr. Jasinski. Present. 13 present, one absent, one excused. Thank you. Clerk will read the notice of public hearing. <clears throat> notice is hereby given that the Schenectady County Legislature will meet at the Legislative Chambers in the Schenectady County Office Building, 620 State Street, Schenectady, New York, at 7 p.m. on October 12, 2021, for the purpose of holding a public hearing on the tentative operating budget of, this, of said county for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2022, and further for the purpose of holding a public hearing on the Capital Improvement Program for the County of Schenectady for the years 2022 through 2027. Thank you. Any members of the public who would like to address our first public hearing? Any members of the public who would like to address this public hearing? Any members of the public who would like to address this public hearing? Seeing none, we also invited members of the public who couldn't be with us this evening to provide written comments through our website. Would the clerk please read any public comments submitted in, re in writing relating to the public hearing? There were no written comments submitted. Thanks. There being no comments, public hearing is now closed. We'll now move to our legislative conference and the rules committee to be chaired by legislator fields the rules committee our first item tonight is resolution number 55 a resolution proclaiming october 21st sorry october 2020 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This is one of our resolutions whereby uh, the county is um, promoting and uh, continue to raise the awareness for breast cancer issues that it affects uh, many people uh, in around the United States and around Schenectady County, promoting breast cancer screening, treatment, diagnosis, and care. Do we have any particular 
questions on this particular resolution. As an almost 30 year breast cancer survivor, I would like to move this. Thank you, Mrs. King. Second. Second. Mrs. Gatto, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None, the resolution is moved. Our next item is resolution number 56, a resolution uh, adopting local law number 5-2021. It's a resolution that relates to um, uh, some of the body piercing uh, issues, just improving the law there. Any move questions? To move to report. Move to report. Second. Second, sir. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? None. The resolution is moved. Resolution number 57, a resolution authorizing the county manager to enter a collective bargaining agreement with the Corrections Bargaining Unit of Schenectady County Sheriff's Benevolent Association, Local 3874, Council 82, AFSCME, AFLCIO. I don't know if uh, there he is, Mr. Gardner. The county attorney. That's thank you very much. Sir, we were uh, able to reach an agreement recently, and the uh, proposed agreement was ratified by the membership of uh, local, thir local 3874. <coughs> uh, in its economic terms, it provides a 2% pay increase with a one time $2,000 bonus for all unit members in 2021 and 2.25% increases in 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025. Uh, we uh, made the, the same health care uh, adjustments that we did with uh, CSEA and uh, 1199 as far as the elimination of uh, our prescription program, Schenectady Meds 1, effective January 1st of this coming year, in replacement with the less costly Schenectady Meds 2 plan, which is a uh, essentially the replacement of a two-tier two copay structure uh, with a three-pay, uh, three-tier copay structure, uh, which distinguishes between preferred brand and non-preferred brand drugs. Additionally, uh, urgent care copays are increased from $20 to $30, and telemedicine copays are dec decreased from $15 to $5. Uh, to help us utilize, uh, incentivize utilization of the less costly treatment options. Uh, we have the same COVID incentives that we had with 1199 and uh, CSEA. Uh, if you get your uh, COVID shot before December 1st, you receive one additional vacation day as a one-time bonus. If 80% of the unit does so on or before December 1st, 2021, then all unit members would receive a $200 bonus uh, we had the same lay, lag pay uh, that we had uh, for the CSA unit. Uh, Juneteenth was, is added as holiday as it was for CSA in 1199. Uh, paid family leave for bonding with a newly born adopted or foster child is uh, agreed to. Uh, uh, same provisions that applied to CSA in 1199. Uh, there's a 25-year uh, longevity step increase it currently topped out at 12 percent at 20 years this would make it 15 percent at 25 years our hope is that we will be able to get some of our correction officers who are eligible for half pay retirement to stay four or five years longer uh, by giving this incentive hazardous duty pay is currently at 1.5 percent under this contract it would go to 2.5 percent on january 1st 2022 uh, there have been a lot of uh, injuries uh, in the last year and uh, just in the last month uh, two correction officers were attacked by a mentally ill inmate who bit them and uh, one correction, correction officer bit them on their face and one correction officer had chunks bitten out of his face so we uh, we think this is uh, helps justify this increase uh, as you may have read in the paper Many firefighters' vehicles and more than 10 correction officers' vehicles were vandalized uh, recently by an individual who had some issues. And uh, we have a provision there to provide up to $1,000 uh, in compensation upon certified 
certification by the sheriff that damage to the vehicle uh, was val is a valid claim. The uh, clothing al uh, allowance goes up $150 per year in uh, 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025 had been frozen for uh, over 10 years. Uh, the most recent uh, Civil Service Examination for Correction Officers only had 39 individuals pass it. Uh, the prior uh, examination had 85 individuals pass, so we have uh, potentially some uh, issues with recruitment and retention coming up in uh, law enforcement. And uh, uh, during the pandemic, correction officers were on the front line. They could not work at home, and uh, they came to work every day. And we were able to keep COVID out of the facility with the help of our county health department team, county management team, until about Thanksgiving 2020. Uh, despite this, we've had over 63 officers test positive for COVID, a rate exceeding 40%. And although there's no proven causal connection that they contracted at the facility, uh, it is about triple the rate for uh, Skanky County residents. So. This proposed agreement we believe would help the county and the sheriff continue to attract and retain a quality workforce of correction officers at a time when uh, such positions are increasingly difficult to fill. So, any uh, questions? I'm not hearing none, we have a motion to uh Move resolution 57. Move to report. Second, okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The resolution is moved. Thank you very much. The next resolution is resolution number 58, a resolution authorizing the county manager to enter into a military construction cooperative agreement and to accept additional funds from the airport infrastructure improvements. This is This is uh, uh, in the uh, tentative uh, 2022 budget. Uh, we have a $4.5 million project to uh, improve our taxiways, E, F, and G, uh, signage, paving, lighting, uh, taking down some of the, the foliage near the taxiways. Um, this is the $1.4 million from the International Guard. Uh, this is a complete grant towards the $4.5 million. And this is just uh, asking for you guys to uh, give us the authorization to accept the money for me to sign uh, the acceptance. Move to the agenda. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the resolution has been moved. The, sec the next item is resolution number 59 regarding acceptance of monies from the New York State Office of Aging. We have Kathy Burns. Smith, Kathy Burns Smith. This is on now. It's on now. Thank you. Sorry about that. You have in your packet some information regarding uh, some NGAs, notification of grant awards that my department has received from the New York State Office for the Aging. You have a uh, letter of approval for our annual update. The NGAs themselves, which describe uh, how each of the funds will be allocated to what program. And I have a brief description for you for each of those NGAs. So um, is this where I say next slide? Thank you. The NGAs are divided into two categories, federal awards and state awards. We will start with the Federal awards, the program year for each of these federal awards is January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021. And I apologize for the small size of the 
font of the print. This is the first time I've done um, a PowerPoint presentation, prepared PowerPoint slides. Next time, the font will be much larger. I apologize. So the first award is for Title 3B in the amount of $142,544. Schenectady County uses this funding for our legal services program. Uh, our legal services lawyer is Richard Wickerham, and we use this for the Congregate Transportation Program. This is transportation to our friendship cafes, our congregate meal sites, which is run through Catholic Charities. Title 3C1, $207,676. Schenectady County uses this funding for the Friendship, meal, Friendship Cafe Meal Program run through Catholic Charities at the Glenville Senior Center, Jewish Community Center, Ten Eyck Apartments, and Our Lady of Fatima Church. And it is also used for nutrition education, nutrition counseling, and monitoring through Cornell Cooperative Extension. Title 3C2, $109,997. We use this funding for a home delivered meal program, which is run through Catholic Charities, and also for nutrition education, nutrition counseling, and monitoring through Cornell Cooperative Extension. Next slide, please. Title 3D, $10,642. Schenectady County uses this funding for its health promotion and evidence-based health promotion, including Tai Chi for arthritis. This program is run by the Department of Senior and Long-Term Care Services. So you can see some of the programs we run directly, some of them we subcontract. With uh, right now, Tai Chi for Arthritis takes place in two locations at Schaefer Heights and at Mont Pleasant Commons. Soon we will be adding a third site at the Jewish Community Center through the request of the Jewish Community Center. Title 3E, $149,505. Schenectady County uses this funding for its caregiver support program, including caregiver counseling, caregiver support groups, and caregiver training. This program is run by uh, the Department of Senior and Long-Term Care Services. And as a side, I would like to um, call your attention. Last week when the county manager did his um, budget presentation, there were several photographs that were in his presentation, one of which was included um, Bill Frank, our Veterans Services Agency Director, who is a member of my advisory council. And he was photographed uh, with a gentleman who is a World War II vet. I thought he was 100 years old. He's only 99. Um, his daughter and the gentleman in the photo are clients in our family caregiver support program. And he and his daughter attended our senior picnic that's where that um, photograph uh, was taken. And we've helped them, assisted them with um, several other uh, efforts and uh, uh, support in our caregiver program. Next slide, please. New York State Awards. This program year is from April 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2022. Expanded in-home services for the elderly program, ICEP for short, $435,081. Schenectady County uses this funding to provide in-home personal care one, personal care two, consumer directed personal care one and personal care two, personal response emergency systems and case management. Schenectady County subcontracts with home care agencies throughout the county to provide consumer direct services and personal care one, personal care two, as well as um, our PERS service. ICEP is a non-medical program for frail elderly Schenectady County residents 60 years of age and older who are not eligible for Medicaid uh, by reason of income. Community service for Community Services for the Elderly Program, $286,945.
Schenectady County uses this funding for its medical transportation program run through Catholic charities. Congregate Services Initiative, CSI, $3,436. Schenectady County uses this funding to provide transportation services run through Catholic charities to the Glenville Friendship Cafe and to grocery stores and supermarkets. Next slide, please. Wellness and Nutrition, $260,380. Schenectady County uses WIN funding for the following nutrition programs. Home delivered meals run through Catholic charities, nutrition education, nutrition counseling, and monitoring through Cornell Cooperative Extension, and the congregate breakfast program run through the Salvation Army. Health insurance, information counseling, and assistance program, high cap for short, $33,617. Schenectady County uses high cap funding to provide information, counseling, enrollment assistance, and problem identification and resolution for Medicare, Medicare supplemental health insurance, and Medicare prescription drug plans. High cap staff assist Medicaid beneficiaries in accessing affordable and appropriate health insurance coverage, Medicare rules and regulations, and the many choices of insurance options HICAP is run through Catholic Charities. Area Agency on Aging, AAA Transportation Program. This is new funding for transportation, which is intended to supplement current transportation funding. This funding provides flexibility to expand Schenectady County's transportation services to additional fun funders, and the amount of this grant is $8,930. Unmet need, next slide please. Unmet need, $424,732. The original purpose of unmet need funding was to provide the AAA network with funding for services for eligible older adults who were unserved due to lack of funds. In Schenectady County, funds are used for home delivered meals, personal care services, and equipment and supplies intended to keep people in their home own homes and off Medicaid. One of the things, one of the projects that we have used unmet need for recently is for the in installation of ramps to assist our ISEP clients to be able to get in and out of their homes safely. Um, otherwise, they might actually have to be in a nursing home if they couldn't get in and out of their homes. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is very good, and um, it's good that uh, these monies are coming to help our elderly. And thank you for your work. Thank you so much. Move to the agenda. Thank you very much. We have our members moved it to the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the resolution has been moved. Resolution number 60, regarding a collective bargaining agreement between SUNY Community Sorry, SUNY Schenectady County Community College and the Adjunct Faculty Bargaining Unit. And I know we have online. Oh, there we go. A person. A person and also um, uh, our president, Mr. Mono, Dr. Mono is on, on Zoom. But thank you and good evening. And I'll ask my colleague, um, Vice President Ryan, uh, to carry most of this uh, presentation to the uh, to the legislature, and thank you for having us this evening. And we're excited and uh, happy to uh, report to you that our conversations with our adjunct faculty went well. As you may recall, this is the second of the contracts since uh, their inception. So, with that, I am going to hand it over to Vice President uh, Ryan. Ryan. Thank, thank you, Dr. Mono. Thank, thank you, Chair Fields, members of the legislature. We're really pleased to bring this agreement forward to the legislature for review and approval. Um, SEIU is our adjunct union, and we, over the summer and spring, uh, their negotiations. And I'm pleased to report that uh, we were able to reach a five year fiscally responsive, uh, responsible agreement. So that would be from September 1st, 2020 until August 31st, 2025. Both parties came into these negotiations 
uh, in good faith to improve the learning experience of our community college students. Um, it, was, it was good conversation, um, and we both uh, approached these negotiations with uh, the intention of improving the experience for the students. Um, some of the highlights include modification of the adjunct promotion pass, path based on number of credits taught versus the number of years served, an opportunity for adjunct faculty to express their desire to teach courses in subsequent terms, a defined time which adjunct faculty are available to students before and after class and a response time to student inquiries, a seniority structure that facilitates an adjunct's ability to stay engaged with the college. This is done through the assignment of courses taught by adjuncts. It's more of like a right of first refusal if they've taught something in the past. They have the opportunity to do that in subsequent semester. Um, the uh, highlights of the compensation package is a 2% increase in the first year and then a 2.25% increase in years two through five. Um, this agreement was ratified by the SEIU membership and we're bringing it here for your consideration tonight. Any questions? Any questions? So moved. Excuse you? Aye. 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 The resolution is removed. Thank you very much. Our next item is resolution number 61, a resolution regarding the purchase of property at 2022 South Ferry Street in the city of Schenectady. And uh, we have Ray Gillen. We have Mr. Gardner. And we have a presentation. Good evening, everyone. Um, walk through a brief presentation. And Dr. Mona's on the line, and uh, Patrick Ryan is here, VP of Administration. We work closely with uh, County Attorney Gardner and Frank Solomon on this uh, initiative, and we're pleased to present it tonight. The, uh, the message here Cheers is that, that uh, this, this property, property acquisition will come to you this evening. evening is really, really part of a long-term long -term focused, focused effort, effort to provide space in the lower State Street area for SUNY Schenectady programs. The simple fact is that the western side of the campus is in a floodplain on the river and is not buildable. Uh, we saw that during the Hurricane Irene and Lee, Tropical Storm Lee, uh, you had massive flooding in the parking lot. Uh, it's just not possible to build there, so the college is expansions, new programs need to be on the State Street, Lower State Street side of the campus. Our first project several years ago, which you all supported, was one of my favorite projects in downtown. We used to come off the exit ramp in front of the college. This is what you saw. Dr. Basil looked out his window at the college for many years and looked at this closed gas station uh, repair station, which was just in a horrible state of repair. Uh, we were working with uh, Chris Gardner back then, uh, cleaned that up, took the building down, remediated the site with, with all your support, and really cleaned up a major entranceway to the community. At that site, this legislature approved the ground lease for a private developer to come in and build a $11 million, 260-bed student housing complex called College Suites at Washington Square. Um, it's right across from the college, and it certainly looks a heck of a lot better than that closed gas station did. Uh, we, to support um, some of these initiatives uh, across the street from the campus, we built that uh, pedestrian barrier uh, running down the, the exit ramp, which has been very, very effective. And we work with the city to improve the uh, crossings, uh, the lights, uh, the timing of the lights so that um, basically students and faculty had to cross at the corner they could not cut over and uh, we really dramatically improved that that intersection we also as you all remember worked to fix liberty park it was a um, 
really a nightmarish situation. There was this park that had all these cr crazy berms and uh, was prevent, pre presented a safety problem for the college. And uh, we were able to replace that with uh, Gateway Park. We'll show you pictures of that shortly. Um, and currently we're working on to allow a left turn from State Street onto South Church, uh, making this whole area of downtown more accessible. We also worked with the city, the Metroplex, to um, improve the streets, the sidewalks, the curbs, the lights on Lower State. So that's part of our usual infrastructure play. I think everyone in the community realizes the Gateway Plaza has been a, a major uh, improvement uh, to this area. Uh, built in the floodplain. There used to be an insurance company there, Scott Taub and AAA Northway. Uh, those two companies were both successfully relocated in, in the county. And um, we took those buildings down with FEMA funding because they were heavily damaged by the storm and um, combined it with the area that uh, housed Liberty Park and created the, uh, the, the new Gateway Plaza, which really looks great. We had a $20 million rehab of the former YMCA, which did present problems for the college uh, in its uh, lifespan as a uh, SRO for, um, for many years. Uh, we've replaced that with uh, senior apartments that are just gorgeous, beautiful, fully occupied with a waiting list. We're currently working with Dr. Mono, the Vice President Ryan, to the, the only Part of this building that's not being utilized now is the former gym space. It's about 8,000 square feet, and we're working closely with the college. We have uh, the developer providing that space at a very below market lease rate of about $5 a, a square foot. So it's a tremendous bargain for the college. And um, I know Dr. Mono and, and uh, his team at the college are very excited about the opportunity to um, use the office space in front, which has been completely rehabbed and then the gym space, which has some great opportunities for the college. The Kindle building, again, with the support of this legislature, was donated to the college with state funding, some from Empire State Development, some from SUNY, um, matching funds from the county. Uh, really a beautiful restoration for the Kindle building, which houses the college's workforce programs. Another benefit uh, was the armory being uh, sold. It was vacant, it was sold at auction. I think you all know that um, the Legiers bought that facility. We invested some money to build uh, handicap accessibility and restore the elevators. Of course, Amazon Studios used it last year to film Modern Love Season 2, and it's really a great multi-purpose facility, and um, uh, it's an asset for the co community and for the college. The Seat Center is located on South Church Street. They took over an old warehouse to expand their programs. They have a lot of linkages with the college, so this has been a, a very successful program. Jennifer Lawrence is pictured here with some of their students. This really helps um, folks basically who have dropped out of school in the high school age group and get them on a career path, get them working with the community college, get them working in industry, uh, really successful program and it's right down there in this lower State Street area close to the college. The biggest project by far in the lower State Street area is the $45 million Mill Artisan District. The college has both its brewery, uh, brewing, craft brewing program, uh, classrooms, and um, they'll be opening a confectionery program. Hope you all come to the opening of that because they're promising us lots of goodies and chocolate and other fun things. But um, it's really been a, a great asset for Lower State and um, uh, has the ability and is housing several um, college programs. Uh, the $20 million Electric City Apartments just up Lower State has also been a major improvement. Uh, Tony Civitella and his team at TransFinder uh, filled a vacant bank with the New York Biz Lab. And the college has a number of very good relations with small, growing tech companies in the Biz Lab that are part of the Startup New York program that the college operates. So again, a connection between the college and Lower State at the Biz Lab, at the Mill Project, at the Kinder Building, at the College Suites, at the Armory, at the Seat Center. You know, these are all uh, outreach from the college to that Lower State Street area. Right now, if you go down to South Church Street, we're reconstructing it. 
Um, again, we're going to be able to go left uh, at the light as you head toward Scotia. So we can open up all of these facilities, the seat center, the armory, the college suites to traffic. Um, we're putting lights, um, we're putting uh, uh, landscaping, curbs, sidewalks, uh, security cameras. It's gonna be a very, um, very nice project. Uh, we're also working with the college to, um, to uh, add some parking in, um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. You all know we're taking down the trailway station that will occur the last week of October. Asbestos abatement is underway now. Again, this had presented some problems with the college at times. It, we, are, we are saving the bus stop. There will be able, you'll be able to board and, 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 and uh, utilize trailways, but the station was vacant. They had no plans to open it. So we're taking it down. It's gonna clean up that area, be added to the Gateway Plaza, create some parking, some green space. Additional improvements in this area, we, we demolished the former Club Illusion, uh, which was a security concern for the college, uh, donated that property to the county. The county holds that property in trust for the college, and we're building a new parking area. Uh, Vice President Ryan has worked very hard on this uh, with Jamie LaHutt from Metroplex, but we've taken an existing county-owned lot that's behind the seat center, married it up to the former Club Illusion lot, and we're building a uh, parking lot area right there as we speak as part of the South Church Street project. It's an adjunct to that project. Again, one of the early projects that we did at, uh, with our economic development team was to get the Zone 5 Police Academy on Area Boulevard, and that's certainly a strong asset to this part of downtown and also has relationships with the college. Turning to 222 South Ferry Street, this was a, it's a vacant lot. At one time, it provided parking for uh, MVP, which we redeveloped the MVP, the former MVP building uh, in the same area. Uh, years and years ago, um, 50, 60 years ago, it was an auto repair truck storage facility. And DEC has undertaken a major cleanup of the site, basically removing the contaminated soil, taking it off site. Uh, treating it, re uh, remediating the soil. This, we do this all the time. We did it at the gas station. We've, you know, we've done this time and time again downtown. Uh, this is a very large parcel. Uh, we have an aerial here. It's, it's um, about one acre, just shy of an acre. Uh, it's the biggest parcel in this part of downtown that's available. It offers a tremendous opportunity for the colleges to uh, to get involved with this property and use it for future expansion. Um, there is a, um, a $215,000 uh, um, item that we're asking for approval on, which is really matched for what DEC has spent uh, to clean up the site. This is part of their, uh, their program. They, they're, they're asking the local sponsor to share in their cost of the cleanup. Uh, after the SUNY uh, match for that cost, it, it's a net cost to the county of $107,500. There's a million dollar price tag on the acre lot itself. And again, after the SUNY match, the cost of the county is $500,000 for um, this, this very large parcel on South Ferry that has been cleaned up um, by DEC. We're very grateful for their assistant, assistance, excuse me. We're also asking for you to approve um, seven additional parcels that are immediately adjacent to 222 South Ferry Street. Uh, we secured options on these property. And when you include the um, property at 222 South Ferry, uh, the total cost is 3.3 million. Net cost to the county after the SUNY match is $1.65 million, which we think is a very good investment. I know Dr. Mono believes this and, and, and Vice President Ryan. This is a, a investment in the college's future ability to grow. Again, cannot grow on the riverside. This is the biggest land mass that we've been able to get our hands on to um, allow the college to continue to do um, uh, good work and train our future leaders and our future employees. Um, it's also cleaning up some areas of lower state that need to be cleaned up that have been a detriment to the college, that have hurt recruiting at the college, both faculty and students. So we think it's very, very important. So what we're asking for your approval for tonight, 
And again, I want to thank Frank Salomon and Chris Gardner for all their hard work on this. This will authorize the county manager to sign a purchase agreement on 222 South Ferry, authorize the county manager to sign the agreement with DEC on the cleanup so we can close that out, uh, authorize the assignment of the options that Metroplex secured, and authorize purchase of the option properties. And I know we went a little long with this. I apologize for being so windy, but we wanted to put this in context of uh, existing college resources and programs in this area and how we need to continue to grow them and to redevelop this part of Lower State Street to the benefit of the community, the county, and also the college. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. <laughs> Is there any particular questions as we look to uh, acquire these properties? Um, more of a comment, uh, uh, Commissioner Gillen, uh, uh, just a great project. I commend uh, the, the staff of Metroplex and, and uh, our county attorney's office, but more importantly, I commend um, the leadership of the Schenectady County Community College for creating an opportunity to create more or to provide more connective tissue within our community um, uh, well, I think that we've seen some census reports that say uh, overall um, uh, attendance uh, uh, in terms of number of uh, uh, individuals going to college is down across the board. SEC continues to accelerate and I think showed the smallest loss there, but also has the biggest amount of um, technology and um, uh, engagement program. So I think this is a great project for us to continue to enforce or, or reinforce uh, our commitment uh, to community and our commitment to helping individuals, especially with the seat center, especially with some of the other uh, um, uh, engagements that we have down there uh, to create an on-ramp uh, for success in our community. So it's a great project. I appreciate all the work that I know was put into this. If I may as well. well um, my thanks to uh, uh, Mr. Gardner, Metroplex, uh, the manager, and Vice Pre President Ryan. And uh, this is really uh, an exciting project for us. Um, I think as the legislature knows that uh, about five years ago, uh, oh, we, we came before the legislature with our first uh, facilities master plan. And the legislature has been incredibly gracious in supporting almost every aspect of our facilities master plan. And almost five years later, we are, at the, uh, we are at the end of that facilities master plan. And this timing could not be better for us as we envision the next, the next facilities master plan for SUNY Schenectady. So I am incredibly thankful and humbled uh, by uh, just the support and the forward thinking of Metroplex, the county, and for the support of Tony Schenectady, your community college. So uh, please uh, accept our thanks on behalf of countless number of students and community members who are ultimately the beneficiaries of your generosity. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you President Morrow. Hearing no further questions, uh, entertain a motion to move this particular resolution. Move to the agenda. Move. Mr. Hughes, second. Mr. Russo, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, this resolution has been moved. We have a few more items this evening. Resolution number 62. Uh, resolution number 62 authorizing the county manager to enter into the administrative settlement agreement with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation for the remediation of 222 South Ferry Street in the city of Schenectady. It's the continuation of the same type of um, uh, discussion just we had here with the uh, President Mono, Mr. Gillen, and also uh, um, Chris Gardner. Move to the agenda. Move to the agenda. Second, Ms. King, all in favor? Any opposed? Hearing none, the resolution has been moved. And the final item is resolution number 63 on the same subject, resolution authorizing the county manager to enter into an option agreement uh, with 222 
uh, South Ferry LLC. Move to the agenda. Move to the agenda, Mr. Hughes. Second, Mrs. King. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the resolution has been moved. And these are all the items in our rules committee this evening. With that, we'll uh, bring the rules committee to a close. Thank you, Legislator Fields. It's now time. It's now time to open privilege of the floor. We we're able to open up our gallery for a limited number of people, and we also invite the members of the public to submit comments through a form on our website. We we'll begin with those in attendance here this evening. Members of the public are asked to limit their comments to three minutes, and please state your full name and address for the record. Any members of the public wishing to speak during privilege of the floor? Good evening, county legislators. Uh, my name is Chad Putman. I reside at 225 Kings Road, Schenectady, New York, 12304. I'm here seeking county legislators' support tonight to help fund a Schenectady Code Blue drop-in center pilot project for the winter season of 21-22. I originally proposed the idea at one of the neighborhood meetings hosted by Mayor McCarthy related to how to spend the incoming 50 plus million dollars coming to the city of Schenectady from the American Rescue Plan. The mayor encouraged me to follow up with the county given homelessness services are more in your wheelhouse I guess he was thinking about DSS and the state funds to the county to help offset Code Blue shelter expenses. I believe there are plenty of funds available through the ARP at the city and county level to help fund this pilot in 21-22 and perhaps a more substantial program in 2023-24 and 2024-25. I will be going back to the city council to ask for their support as well. I recently spoke with Ashley Carter with the Schenectady, um, I'm sorry, with the Sarato Shelters of Saratoga, Code Blue Shelter in Saratoga Springs. She helped provide a template and baseline for a similar center in Schenectady for those experiencing homelessness or at risk of homelessness. The SOS Code Blue Shelter Saratoga Springs was open from November to April of last year for a total of 155 nights hosting 211 guests, averaged 30 to 35 guests per night, and served 500 meals. The Code Blue Shelter is separate from the year-round shelter programs available in Saratoga. The shelter would open when temperatures drop below 32 degrees and would open from 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. overnight. The shelter would become a navigation center during the day, 2 a.m. to 2 p.m., Monday through Fridays, and also act as a warming station for those cold days. The Navigation Center hosted representatives from nonprofit service organizations, including insurance navigation, housing, and mental health SUD, substance use disorder treatment and recovery services, along with county programs such as Department of Social Services. This winter season, the Navigation Center and Code Blue Shelter will be located at 4 Delphi Street, in Saratoga, where it has been in recent years. Next year, it will be in a permanent location. Free meals included warm dinners, donated by local restaurants and religious groups. Leftovers were made available at lunch. Otherwise, soups or chilies were prepared for guests. I would welcome an opportunity to be part of an organizing committee related to this proposal. Working together with Schenectady stakeholders, we can make this pilot project a reality before winter arrives. Anyone else wishing to comment during privilege of the floor? My name is Bob Winchester. I've lived at, Hill, at 51 Hill Street in Alplaz, New York, 1 through 008 for 49 years. I was a teacher and administrator in the Niskuna School District, and as part of that work, I work for groups like the Human Service Planning Council, the Health services administration uh, on the governor's commission on the national education national task force on drugs and alcohol i studied health education and taught in china and i was a nest in school board member for nine years i mention that because i know why people come to these meetings it's usually to ask for something or it's usually to complain about something i've been on 
so many boards, I, I've seen that happen. But I want to come here tonight to thank you for two things that I think are really vital that the county has done. I want to thank both past legislatures and the current legislature. About 37 years ago, uh, a group of people in Schenectady County recognized that we didn't have a real public health service. What we had were town health officers and a Schenectady City public health service. And a group of us came before the legislature and with the help of legislators and public citizens, we petitioned you to move from that antiquated model to a public health service that would meet modern needs. It would help determine public health policy in Schenectady County and align it with state and national policies, and it would provide public health monitoring and issue and, and uh, observation of service and make recommendations for laws and regulations for public health. Uh, those seven individuals, I can only remember five of them, but one was Betty Bean, one was Muggsy Burmaster, one was Ray Zanta, one was Evelyn Holmblatt, and I was another person who came before you. It took a lot of courage then to move from the antiquated system to a more modern system, and I applaud the legislature for doing that. It would have been impossible to deal with many of the public health issues that we faced, including COVID, in the antiquated system. Um, I want to praise tonight the Schenectady County Public Health Service, uh, its leaders, its staff, and its, uh, particularly its response to this crisis. They monitored what was happening, which was really vitally important, particularly in the beginning of this outbreak. They reported out data and made that data public uh, without filtering it, and I thank them for that. Our zip code, 12008, which is the smallest zip code in the United States, had the greatest rate of unvaccinated people in Schenectady County. Because of that, uh, the Schenectady County Public Health Service in conjunction with the Outlaws Residents Association held one clinic uh, to get people vaccinated and is holding a second clinic to vaccinate and give booster shots to the fire companies in five surrounding fire districts uh, to help ensure the safety. I, I found the public health service helpful. They were responsive, they were resourceful, they were knowledgeable and they're cooperative. And I really, really appreciate and commend you for their supporting them and them for the service that they've delivered. The second group I want to call out is something that I don't think you get called out uh, often enough. And I, I have lived in this area for now 60 plus years. And then through most of those years, I've driven regularly past what was then called the county farm. And when you repurpose that to a county composting facility on Hetcheltown Road, uh, previous administrations tore down a barn that I thought was particularly useful. But anyhow, besides that, they have made an, a, an incredible place for people to send things to be compost and saved countless times and, and money in doing that. These people work with the public under incredibly difficult the conditions. They recycle large volumes of waste uh, and appliances, and they deal with small volumes to major dumps of organic material. Uh, if you've never been to that facility, it's quite uh, intensive in how it works. They run a complex facility to turn organic matter into useful products which they resell to the public and which helps fund that service. It's neat. It's well run. They manage public and private donations of material with polite, helpful, and courteous demeanor under all kinds of weather conditions and under all kinds of client conditions. They have people who are very compliant and people who, as some people can be, are obnoxious. Uh, early in my career as a teacher, I ran the first modern recycling effort uh, station, one of the stations at, uh, for the county at Niskayuna High School. And it was so successful that we filled up more in recycled goods that, than any of the other sites, or in fact, all the other sites combined. And when told that material was, we didn't have any more room, 
a woman drove her car into me and pushed me backwards. And that's the point at which the county decided maybe we need to look at recycling differently. So I know well how public can be insistent on getting services and these people at the county compost facility are really phenomenal at meeting all kinds of people and all kinds of needs. I've seen them help senior citizens with getting things out of their cars and trucks. I've seen them wait and move uh, materials after people have gone. Uh, the facility is, is run very cleanly. The roads are well maintained. They're not potholes. They really do a fantastic job. I've used that facility for many years and I'm pr particularly impressed with how well it's currently maintained. Uh, the staff is incredibly helpful and they are somebody that I have grown to really appreciate not only what they do but how they do it. I'd like to name the people who work there. Uh, I'd like to commend them, and I'd like to express my thanks to them, to you, and, and I've tried to express it to them. Daryl Romano, Steve Cook, Joe Kehoe, Dave Pigeon, Randall Spangler, Hunter Rowinski, Paul Schaefer, Fred Romano, and Tyler Levy. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for continuing to support that facility, as well as the Public Health Service. And thank you most of all for being diligent in how you protect the people of Schenectady County and how you are carefully monitoring the funds that you disperse. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to comment during privilege of the floor? Anyone else wishing to comment during privilege of the floor? Anyone else wishing to comment during privilege of the floor? Seeing no one. I'd ask the clerk to read any comments received via our website into the record at this time. There were no sub comments submitted through the website. Seeing no comments, privilege of the floor is now closed. Now call to order the re October regular meeting of the Schenectady County Legislature. Will the clerk please take the roll? Mr. Fields. Present. Mr. Russo. Present. Ms. Pratt. Present. Ms. King. Present. Mr. Constantine. Here. Ms. Gatta. Here. Mr. Sosha. Here. Mr. Pascarello. Here. Mr. Paterni. Present. Ospelich. Here. Ms. Milano. Here. Mr. McGarry is excused. Mr. Hughes. Present. Mr. McDonald. Here. Mr. Jasinski. Present. 14 present, one excused. Thank you. Members received copies of the minutes from the meetings held on September 14th and October 4th. Is there a motion to adopt the minutes? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are hereby adopted. Clerk will read the list of reports received. We received reports from the Commissioner of Finance, Department of Weights and Measures, and the County Clerk. Thank you. Committee reports. Let's start our service with reports from the Committee on Health and Human Services. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Committee on Health and Human Services met on October 4th, 2021 and reported to the agenda resolution 142. Thank you. Let's start our social reports from the Committee on Labor and Civil Service. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Committee on Labor and Civil Service met on October 4th, 2021 and reported to the agenda resolution 143. Thank you. Legislative Paterni reports from the Committee on Public Facilities, Transportation, and Infrastructure. Mr. Chairman, thank you. The Committee on Public Facilities, Transportation, and Infrastructure met on October 4, 2021, and reported to the agenda resolutions 144, 145, and 146. Thank you. Legislator Constantine reports from the Committee on Public Safety and Firefighting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Committee on Public Safety and Firefighting met on October 4, 2021, and reported to the agenda Resolution 147. Thank you. Mr. Russo reports from the Committee on Technology and Communication. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Committee on Technology and Communication met on October 4th, 2021 and reported to the agenda Resolution 148. Thank you, sir. Legislator Fields reports from the Committee on Rules. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Committee on Rules met earlier this evening and reported to the agenda Resolutions 133, 134, 135, 136, 137, 138, 139, 140, and 141. Thank you, sir. Also, the Committee on Ways and Means. And the Committee on Ways and Means met on October 4, 2021, and reported to the agenda resolutions 142, 143, 144, 147, and 148. Thank you, sir. Our first item this evening is Resolution 133 21. Sponsor is the Committee on Rules. The clerk will read. Resolution pro proclaiming October 2021 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Any discussion? Seeing no other clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Aye. Ms. Pratt. 
Aye. Ms. King? Aye. Mr. Constantine? Yes. Ms. Gavin? Yes. Mr. Sosha? Yes. Ms. Carella? Yes. Mr. Paterni? Aye. Ms. Osvalich? Yes. Ms. Volano? Yes. Mr. McGarry is excused. Mr. Hughes? Aye. Mr. McDonald? Aye. Mr. Jasinski? Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. The resolution is passed. At this time, I'd like to recognize Legislator Sosha for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to move that proposed local law D be lifted from the table. As discussed at our meeting last month, it was brought to our attention that in many ways, Schenectady County's body art regulations were far more restrictive than most other counties and were in, an impediment to doing business in the county. These proposed changes would strike a balance between protecting public health and creating a business-friendly environment for the body art industry. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Opposed local laws lifted from the table. Our next item is resolution 134-21. Sponsors the committee on rules. The clerk will read. Resolution adopting local law number five, 2021. Any discussion? Seeing those, the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Aye. Pratt. Aye. Ms. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Ms. Gatta. Yes. Mr. Sosha. Yes. Mr. Pascarella. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Ms. Osvalich. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. McGarry is excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next item is resolution 135-21. Sponsors the committee on rules. The clerk will read. Resolution authorizing the county manager to enter into a collective bargaining agreement with the Corrections Bargaining Unit of Schenectady County Sheriff's Office, Benevolent Association, Local 3874, Council 82, AFSCME, AFL-CIO. Any discussion? Another clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Aye. Ms. Pratt. Aye. Ms. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Gata. Yes. Sosha. Yes. Pascarella. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Ospoch. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. McGarry is excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next item is resolution 136 21. Sponsors the committee on rules. The clerk will read. Resolution, resolution authorizing the county manager to enter into a military construction cooperative agreement and to accept additional funds for airport infrastructure improvements. Any discussion? Seeing no, the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Aye. Mr. Pratt. Aye. Mr. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Mr. Gatta. Yes. Mr. Sosha. Yes. Mr. Pascarella. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Ms. Osvalich. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. Gary is excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next item is resolution 137 21. Sponsors the committee and rules. The clerk will read. Resolution regarding the acceptance of monies from the New York State Office for Aging. Any discussion? Seeing no, the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Ms. Pratt. Aye. Ms. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Ms. Gatta. Yes. Mr. Sosha. Yes. Mr. Pascarella. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Osvalich. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. McGarry is excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next name is resolution 138 21. Sponsors the committee on rules. The clerk will read. A resolution regarding a collective bargaining agreement between SUNY Schenectady County Community College and the adjunct faculty bargaining unit. Any discussion? Seeing no, the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Aye. Aye. Mr. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Ms. Gatta. Yes. Mr. Sosha. Yes. Pascarella. Yes. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Osvalich. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. McGarry is excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Sorry, Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. Resolution is passed. Our next item is resolution 139 21. Sponsors the committee on rules. The clerk will read. A resolution regarding the purchase of property at 222 South Ferry Street in the city of Schenectady. Any discussion? Seeing no, the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Aye. Mr. Pratt. Aye. Mr. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Ms. Gatta. Yes. Mr. Sosha. Yes. Mr. Pascarella. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Osvalich. Yes. Ms. Volano. Yes. Mr. McGarry is excused. Mr. Hughes. Mr. McDonald. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next name is resolution 140-21. Sponsors of the committee and rules. The clerk will read. 
a resolution authorizing the county manager to enter into an administrative settlement agreement with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation for the remedi remediation of 222 South Ferry Street in the city of Schenectady. Any discussion? King, I'll report, please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Aye. Pratt. Aye. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Mr. Gatta. Yes. Mr. Socia. Yes. Mr. Cascarello. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Hostelich. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. Gary's excuse. Mr. Hughes. Mr. McDonald, Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next item is Resolution 141 21, sponsored as a committee on rules. The book will read Resolution authorizing the county manager to enter into an option assignment agreement with, with 222 South Ferry Street, LLC. Any discussion? Seeing no, will the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Aye. Pratt. Aye. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Mr. Gatta. Yes. Mr. Socia. Yes. Mr. Pascarella. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Hostelich. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. Gary's excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. McDonald. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next item is Resolution 142 21. Sponsors, Legislator Osilich, the clerk will read. Resolution regarding the acceptance of monies from the New York State Office of Addiction Services and supports in the New York State Office of Mental Health. Any discussion? Seeing no, the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Pratt. Aye. Ms. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Adam. Yes. Mr. Socia. Yes. Mr. Pascarella. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Osloch. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. McGarry's excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. The resolution is passed. Our next item is Resolution 143 21. Sponsors, Legislator Socia. The clerk will read. Resolution to create certain positions at the Schenectady County Public Health Services. Any discussion? Now the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Aye. Pratt. Aye. Mr. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Adam. Yes. Mr. Socia. Yes. Mr. Pascarello. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Osloch. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. McGarry's excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next item is Resolution 144-21. Sponsors, Legislator Paterni, the clerk will read. Resolution to amend the 2021 Capital Improvement Program to provide funding for a streetscape project for certain county buildings. Any discussion? Seeing no, the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Aye. Ms. Pratt. Aye. Ms. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Mr. Gatta. Yes. Mr. Socia. Yes. Mr. Pascarella. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Hustlers. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. McGarry is excused. Mr. Hughes. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excuse. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next item is Resolution 145 21. Sponsors, Legislative Attorney, the clerk will read. Resolution regarding a secret determination for roadway improvements at the intersection of Rosendale Road and Old River Road in the town of Muscuna. Any discussion? Seeing no, the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Aye. Ms. Pratt. Aye. Ms. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Cata. Yes. Mr. Socia. Yes. Mr. Pascarello. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Hostelich. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. McGarry. Is excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next item is Resolution 146 21. Sponsors, Legislative Paterni, the clerk will read. Resolution authorizing the county purchasing agent to offer for sale surplus equipment. Any discussion? Seeing no, the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Russo. Ms. Pratt. Aye. Mr. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Ms. Gatta. Yes. Mr. Socia. Yes. Mr. Pascarella. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Osloch. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. McGarry's excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next item is Resolution 147 21. Sponsors, Legislator Constantine, the clerk will read. Resolution regarding the acceptance of monies from the New York State Department of Labor to support workforce development in Schenectady County. Any discussion? Seeing no, the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Rizzo. Aye. Mr. Pratt. Aye. Mr. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Ms. Gatta. Yes. Mr. Socia. Yes. Mr. Pascarella. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Osterich. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. McGarry is excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excuse. Thank you. The resolution is passed. Our next item is Resolution 148-21. Sponsors, Legislator Russo, the clerk will read. Resolution to amend the 2021 operating budget to provide funding for the implementation of a multi-factor authentication system for certain county employees. Any discussion? Seeing no, the clerk please call the roll. Mr. Fields. 
Aye. Jerusa. Aye. Pratt. Aye. Ms. King. Aye. Mr. Constantine. Yes. Cata. Yes. Mr. Socha. Yes. Mr. Pasquarello. Yes. Mr. Paterni. Aye. Ms. Hostelich. Yes. Ms. Milano. Yes. Mr. Gary's excused. Mr. Hughes. Aye. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Jasinski. Aye. 14 aye, one excused. I think the resolution is passed. And that concludes our business for this regular meeting of the county legislature. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Aye. Thank you all. The legislature stands adjourned until tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock p.m. where we will vote on the budget. Thank you all.